Hi, my name is Brian Brecking. I'm CEO of Kairos. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I actually grew up there, born in Columbus, Ohio. I was actually adopted at a very early age. I uh, lived with a, an Amish foster family, interestingly enough, which is kind of strange considering I'm in tech. Uh, and then raised by two amazing uh, parents in Philly. Sometimes when people ask me, you know, how did I get here? How did I start this business? You know, I always say it's a pivot on a pivot on a pivot, right? So first I made a time clock company. Very simple, I thought, you know, clocking in, clocking out was too hard. You use your mobile device and it would be easy. The problem was people would uh, cheat the system. They started putting each other's numbers, so on and so forth. So we started using facial recognition to make sure the person who was clocking in really was the right person. And then eventually we learned, we had customers saying, hey, your facial recognition is really, really good. I don't want your time clock, but can I buy your facial recognition? Um, and after we got a number of people asking us that question, we said, you know what, let's stop doing the time clock thing and pivot the entire business into being a facial recognition company. Prior to that, I worked at uh, some big tech firms, Apple, uh, Comcast, IBM, and others. You know, oftentimes people ask me, why did you build Kairos in Miami? And uh, I think, like everything in life, it's the most counterintuitive things that are the most important. So Miami is the number one place to start a small firm in the country, in the world, if you ask me. And there's really kind of two or three factors. Um, one, very low cost of doing business, a low cost of living as compared to a Silicon Valley, a Washington DC, a New York. Um, much, much cheaper competitively, no tax. Um, one of the really interesting things there is that we have no income tax on personal income in Florida. We have, if you incorporate in Delaware, which many tech firms are, there's no uh, state income tax in Delaware. So you're in a no tax situation by doing those two things together. And the third reason is access to capital. So for, in California, for every three startups, there's one angel investor. In Florida, there are three angel investors for every one startup. So that amount of capital is really important for early stage companies. An angel investor is your lifeblood, your lifelines, your oxygen. So in your early days, when you don't have much of a product and you just have a really good idea or maybe a good team, it's a person that believes in you and invests in the company early, like your lifesaver, so to speak, to get you to the first big funding round. We've raised $6 million to date, a uh, mixture of angel investors here in Miami, some small funds. Uh, the state of Florida is one of our investors. Mitch Kapoor of Kapoor Capital in San Francisco is one of our investors. Um, so yeah, we've had a pretty good time fundraising. One of the things to think about is, you know, we're trying to figure out why there's so few you know, black tech entrepreneurs. Uh, I think one of the things is access. Uh, quite often, we're just not given the opportunity or the conversations to say, you've got a great idea, we're behind you. You know, here's ten dollars or $15,000 for that initial thought. Let's see if you can figure it out. You know, we don't really have sometimes access from a, a family perspective either. Uh, I have a number of friends that their, their first investors were their, their, their rich uncle, right? And they just gave them 100 grand and they said, hey, go and learn. Uh, that wasn't my scenario. <laughs> that wasn't my situation. So I think having not a lot of access to capital or even a person to kind of tell you that you can do it can sometimes be a challenge. Yeah, my situation of how I got my first you know, capital, our, the first $250,000 invested in the Kairos was my own. Um, I was you know, really blessed enough to have worked at Apple at a period of just 800% growth. I got there right after the iPhone launched and then all the way through the iPad launch. Steve Jobs was still there, all the, you know, all the big wigs. So uh, the stock that I accrued at that time was valuable. I sold most of it to start the company before the seven to one split. The hardest thing about raising capital from investors, I think it's probably by stage. Um, when you're at the angel stage, it's meeting enough people Tell, getting good enough at telling your story to get those kind of first investors. And it's a, it's a herd mentality. So after you get your first one, you'll get four more. But getting the very first person to put their money in is extremely difficult. Uh, at Series A, it's probably more about access or geography. If you're not in some of the larger areas, New York, uh, Silicon Valley, even some things like places like Austin and DC, it's a little more challenging to raise you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. Yeah, I spend a lot of my time mentoring other entrepreneurs, and I actually spend a lot of my time being mentored. Um, I'd say I'm doing about 30 to 35 meetings a week in my overall business, and about five to six of those meetings are mentorship meetings of some form. 
you know, when you look at the percentage of Americans that are, are black versus the, the percentage of venture capital that goes to black entrepreneurs, I mean, the, the disparity is so clear. You know, I, I often hear sometimes from my friends that are in venture and PE that, uh, you know, liquid will find its way to the right places, but that's clearly not going on in this market. I think there's a couple of things that really could be done. I think uh, while there are very few blacks in venture capital, there are a large number or a larger number in private equity, pension funds, hedge funds. And I would love to see the, those people do more to say to a venture capitalist that they invest in and say, hey, I'm gonna invest $100 million in your fund. You've gotta be able to find a, a place for one, two, five, $10 million of this money to be to an entrepreneur of color. I think it's, it's certainly very, very important. Uh, I think the other thing is doing away with unanimous votes at venture capital firms, something that Mitch Kapoor has spoken about in the past, I feel strongly about. You don't always know the, the, the reasons behind every single person's vote in a large venture capital firm. So in, in some cases, you've got to get eight, nine, ten, uh, even a large number of votes, all unanimous, to get an investment. And one of those people could hold a kind of an animus, a little bit of a racial animus, or they could even have an unconscious bias and say, I don't know why, but I just don't like this deal, right? And they don't, they don't vote for it. So getting rid of uh, unanimous votes and moving to like a majority model, I think would be uh, very important. So I watched the Colin Kaepernick uh, protest and I, I asked myself that question, what would I do in that very same situation? For me, I'm a fan of the stand and fist as opposed to the knee. Uh, and I don't know why that's different, <laughs> but I can only speak for myself. I do have a deep respect for those in the military and I've seen friends and family of mine that are offended by the Kaepernick protests that are black. Um, but they're not as offended uh, by the fist. How can tech entrepreneurs take a knee or how can they really show the world their commitment to BLM and all, all of our kind of shared challenges? It's a really tough question. So here, and this is why it's tough. Number one, I think that as a leader and as a CEO, you're kind of responsible to a few constituencies, right? Your, you know, your shareholders slash investors, you know, your employees and your customers. This is something we thought about a lot, a lot at Apple. Um, and so then there's your own kind of personal beliefs and needs, and that's kind of who you are, your, your gender, your, your race, your religion. I think there has to be some, for me, there has to be some separation where you're not hurting the business by making a stand, but you are also making people aware of where you stand as a leader on these, uh, on these matters. It's very delicate, but I think something, some kind of protest or some kind of at least mention should be done by everybody, black or white. Hi, my name is Brian Brackeen, CEO of Kairos, and I'm here talking with Mogul about my thoughts on the world.